Martin Wiedemann, welcome to the executive talk. We sit in a meeting room at, um, at uh, your bank. It's the oldest private bank in Zurich, over 260 years old. And it's one of the last remaining, I think one of the last six remaining private banks in Switzerland in its strictest term, meaning that the partners are uh, completely liable uh, for the whole business. Do you sometimes feel like, almost like a dinosaur of the industry? Yeah. No, not really a dinosaur. I mean, we do feel that we are special. Uh, we are specially set up. We are an unlimited partnership. We, are, uh, we have skin in game. Uh, um, our clients quite like this. And we are a relatively small entity and a family bank. And, uh, and so I, I quite, I'm quite comfortable with it and I would like to keep it that way. You were talking about that liability and that's something that people who are not from the business or in the business have, have, have a hard time understanding because I can imagine that there's a lot of responsibility and there's a huge pressure coming with that. Uh, I know you have been asked that question plenty of times before, but I'm going to ask it as well. How can sure. you sleep at night with all that pressure? I can really sleep very well. And, um, and uh, the pressure is, is not so high because it's in our hands to to look for how, how, what sort of risk we are taking in terms of what sort of clients do we take, what sort of business do we do with these clients, we are not in the uh, investment banking business, then what sort of uh, loans do we give out to our clients and therefore the partners are very defensive in doing business. So the only time in, in the past 30 years where I was here in the business and the uh, past 28, uh, 28 years as a partner, when it was really quite tricky was uh, in those times of 2008 and 2009. So the financial crisis. Financial crisis. And we were often asked, you're not too big to fail, you're uh, a small bank. Um, could not run and bottom fail as well. And then uh, we uh, said, yeah, in three different terms, uh, we, we don't really have an issue uh, with uh, loans outstanding with the balance sheet. The balance sheet is very liquid and very. Uh, we have a lot of equity. Then our traders can't just do what, what they want. They don't have like a proprietary book. But the fourth point where, which, where we couldn't give an answer was uh, the counterparty risk. And counterparty risk uh, uh, was an issue back then and still can be an issue uh, down the road. However, you have to be covered for everything. So if tomorrow all your clients uh, withdrew their money, you have to pay them out, right? Yeah, without a problem. Without a problem. We have this liquidity in our balance sheet. We have our assets are extremely liquid. They're all in Swiss franc government bonds and Swiss county bonds and so on. Or the majority of the cash sits on the, uh, with the Swiss central bank. So we can pay them out, all the clients. Uh, how big is the problem of interest rates, which are in Switzerland a bit, a bit special uh, for a lot of years now? Uh, that must hurt... Uh, you quite a bit. It does hurt, yeah. You know, uh, all the cash which is sitting on the on the accounts of our clients. You're paying fees sit, on that. Yeah. yeah, we sit. We have a certain free limit at the Swiss Central Bank. Of course, we we use that free limit, and with the rest, we uh, we we uh, pay like um, li like an interest of zero point seven five percent. Or then we we buy Swiss franc government bonds, and there we have a minus minus interest. So we are. It's a negative business in these days anyway. Uh, when we go back to the responsibility, I can imagine, since you're a very personal bank, uh, the clients at, at Round and Bottom come and see you directly, they come and speak to you directly, so you have a huge responsibility towards them as well, because you, you face them uh, more than other bankers do. How big is that responsibility, that you don't want to give someone uh, some bad advice, or that you have to be liable for your advice vis-a-vis -vis these customers who have come here for, 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 for a lot of years already. Yeah. I think that's our unique selling proposition because uh, where can a client talk directly to the owner of the bank? And uh, especially during times, like I just said, uh, 2008, 2009, uh, people were extremely happy to be able to talk to the owners because we would have to give them a, a totally proper answer and a true answer and not just like a, a memo which was sent out to the clients. 
Um, we, we, of course, talk to these clients and talk to them as, as how we would invest the money. So we, we give them proper uh, advice not to sell them something, but to put ourselves on the same side of the table and say, what, what are we going to buy for you now in the open market? There are so many products, there are so many funds, there are so many different equities we, we could buy or sell, and we would uh, do it uh, uh, out of their point of view, and not as a salesperson. In a way, that's that's the tradition, the traditional banking system as we know it, and and as 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 your bank started in 1750 as well. I can imagine. Do you sometimes think uh, the banking industry would be? would be better off or would have a better reputation if more bankers actually work that way, that you know, your, your asset manager is a face, it's someone the client knows, it's someone he can trust, uh, instead of just a, a faceless uh, manager from a bank that never gets in touch with his clients. Yeah. I think it's true. I think we would have a better banking world if all the banks would be set up like us. We call ourselves banquiers as, as, as opposite to bankers. The banquiers are entrepreneurs. They have a totally different timeline than the, the, the bankers. The bankers, they basically think from quarter to quarter, we think almost at the extreme from generation to generation. So all the decisions we are taking is always with a long-term view, 10 years, 20, 30 years. We would like to, all the decisions we are taking now, we think what is this going to have in terms of impact for the bank when it's 20 years older? Or what does it mean for our children when they are in the bank? And I have two sons in the bank right now, so, uh, so I start to think what impact is, is it going to have down the road on them? I believe it's it's a better way than uh, just thinking from quarter to quarter. Uh, when we think of that short-term uh, thinking sometimes from bankers, uh, that goes with profit as well. Short-term profit, meaning uh, higher salaries, uh, bony remuneration. If you look at these uh, issues in the banking industry, in the finance industry, I don't think you have the same. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you don't have the same salaries in your bank either. Uh, is it difficult to, to, to attract people if you have a different uh, banking system like yours? Yeah. I think we attract the people who feel at home uh, with our bank. It's not, it's not difficult for us to attract people. It's, uh, of course, we attract the people who, are, who fit uh, to our family business. We are like a big family. We employ 200 people. They're all here in this building and they know exactly for whom they work. They don't wor work for the anonymous shareholder. They work for uh, the partners who own this bank. They can talk to the partners on a daily basis. They go to the ski weekend and ski with the partners. So we are one big family and many people quite like this. And then the bonus situation, compensation needs to be adequate, but we don't need to pay like huge salaries because those people we, we needed to pay huge salaries we might not want. Mm -hmm. Does that go for the partners as well, or are you? Do you have a different system? No, the partners. Of course, the partners. They uh, they pay themselves a certain uh, basis salary, but then there is at the end of the year there is a uh, hopefully profit, which was the case over the past thirty years, luckily, and then the partners take as much out as they want. And uh, of course, we would like to build equity. We would like to build reserves within the banks to cover like all eventualities. And therefore, we are not really paying out a lot. Uh, the bank has, has really a uh, relatively strong balance sheet in these days. Uh, you were talking about the, the partners and you were talking about a family. And, and in this case, the partners are family and are families. There are at the moment five partners from three different families uh, who have been here for generations uh, already as well. As we know with families, it's very nice when things work out and when everything goes well. But it can be tricky as well. Uh, how do you deal with situations, issues that maybe the five partners aren't always aligned and aren't always uh, uh, of the same opinion? How do you deal with, with, with problems and issues within the partners? <coughs> the lucky part about the five partners is they're not, uh, they don't have exactly the same talents. Uh, we don't have five, five goalkeepers or five uh, offensemen. We have uh, two offensemen, two, two defensemen and one goalkeeper. So the ideal situation. Ideal Ideal, so we work extremely well together. And um, the channel trend 
um, uh, every one of the partners knows exactly we are remaining in private banking. We want to do it as well as possible. We want that our clients uh, get something that it eventually is sort of like a win-win situation, win for the client and win for the bank. And, uh, and this general trend, uh, if we go along these lines, we hardly ever have, a, have an issue. Of course, there are smaller issues we debate about and so on, but for the general trend, every one of the family and every one of the family members has the, exactly the same goal. On the other hand, if there were problems, uh, if I can take a uh, family image once again, isn't it like almost like a marriage you can't get out of? I mean, there, there, is, no, there is no possibility of a divorce, is there? <laughs> There is no possibility of divorce. I mean, luckily, we have never come close to this situation. Uh, it would be um, an unhappy situation if we had a, a partner sort of like not pulling or, or, or pushing the same direction as, as everyone else does. So, so when we take up a new partner, and this will be the case again now the, for the, the new next generation, generation coming up, so there has to be like a, a full, everyone has to be really in favor of that new partner. And, uh, and if not everyone is in the favor of the new partner, then we don't do it. Speaking of those generations, you're in a in a peculiar or in a in an incredible situation at the moment that there are three generations from uh, the family Biedermann that work in the bank at the moment. Your father is still working here; he's over 80 years old. Then there's you, and then there's your son, and now two sons who work uh, right now at the bank. How does that go? I mean, you know, we know as well. Again, with families, uh, it might be all right if you see each other at night at yeah. uh, the dinner table, but if you see each other all the time. Uh, is that completely stressless? Uh, completely stressless. We have really a very nice family. It's on top of, of everyone else you just mentioned. My brother uh, is in the business yes. in the business too. He's a partner, and um, it's it's again a, a USP for the bank as well. Because let's say let's take a lady client of my father who is about the same age, like eighty seven. My father is not a partner anymore, but he's still a client client relationship manager, and he talks to this lady client and he has uh, achieved all that trust with her. It's really a trustful uh, relationship, uh, very often very friendly. All these clients become also friends of ours. And so uh, she has three children, and these three children, they bank with my brother and myself. And she has uh, 10 grandchildren, and they bank with us too. And maybe down the road, the great-grandchildren will bank with my two sons. And this is something, this is a huge advantage we have. And this is liked by our clients. And there is no tension, at least uh, in my family member, we, we are a, a happy family, I would say. Maybe it stems also th from there that my father, at the, when we had this shift of the generation pretty much 30 years ago, he would let go and he would not pull back anymore. He would say, you do it now, I trust in you, make your mistakes, but he did not intervene later on. And that's a big thing, and uh, I learned from that, and I hopefully will do it the same way with my children down the road. But it's quite remarkable because it goes you know, through these three generations. You have three generations of banking as well. It goes from kind of handwritten bank account bookkeeping to uh, cryptocurrencies and blockchain with yes. your son, I guess. Yeah. He's, he's the master of cryptocurrencies and blockchain. He gives speeches to Rotary Clubs and so on in exactly that theme. Uh, what does that mean when you grow up in a family like that? You, for example, was there ever, ever a possibility that you might go to your father and say, I don't want to become a banquier, I want to be a, a football player, or I want to be, a, a, I don't know, a train conductor, or all these, uh, these, these jobs that, that young boys might dream of. Was there ever a possibility of you not becoming uh, his, his, his uh, successor. Absolutely. I mean, he, he would never say you have to, uh, eventually you have to go to this bank. He would let it open in the room. He would, of course, talk here and then about the bank, but he would not have this big elephant of expectation in the room. And, um, and I did the same with my children, too. We were talking about it. We had always these dinner talks. Uh, the whole I have uh, three children, and my, my, my wife. And usually at the end of the day, we would wrap up the day, and everyone would uh, sort of tell how was the day. And I would do that, too. And except for 2008 and 2009, I would probably talk positively about banking. So, so this is what my children heard. But I never said, you have to, never. They could, they could really go a totally different way if they are happy. Uh, 
one thing that goes with every family is values. Uh, that's something you want to give over to your, to your children. Uh, values is something that's very important for a company as well and, and for a private bank even more, I guess. Uh, who creates and who defines the values in a, in a company which is over 260 years old? Are those traditional values from the start or do you have to kind of adapt them as well? Um, these are, it's almost like a DNA we have in, in the bank. You know, we earned it, we, we got that DNA from our parents when we took, uh, took over. We learned how, how they treated their employees and, uh, and we copied that, in a, we especially copied the positive things. And I would say that DNA is still in the bank and, um, and we try to hand it on to our, uh, to our em employees. And I believe the long-term employees, and luckily we have many of them, we have really many of them. I'm always very happy when I can uh, congratulate someone to the 25th anniversary with the bank. And it happens often. Um, that DNA sticks to these employees too. And they, of course, reflect uh, uh, to us as well. This is now, this is, go, goes, is going offline to what you usually do as a bank. Uh, your your uh, family culture, your bank culture is sort of like diverting in this direction or this direction. Uh, uh, or then they say, this is exactly what usually a Rodman Baltimore would do. For instance, lately, there was the, the new 200 uh, uh, bill or uh, Swiss francs coming out. And as a gift, we handed out the 200 bill to every, each and every employee. And then someone came and said, this was typical Ron and Baltimore, that something like this would happen. Mm -hmm. It was not expected, it was a surprise. And these type of things we like to put in on an annual basis. So you gave out 40,000 Swiss francs, if I calculated yeah. that right. <laughs> um, one thing that, that might be surprising and quite striking, I mean, you might be in an old traditional house and company, and, and someone might even say oh, maybe a little bit old fashioned, but you have very new and kind of modern approaches. For example, all 200 employees are on a first name basis, meaning every uh, one working here, uh, even the apprentice, calls you Martin. Yes. Why did you decide to do that? <clears throat> we felt it, it was time, you know, it was, uh, this decision was probably taken about eight years ago or so, and we felt it was time, and I think it was a very good move because it brought us even closer together. I, I, I was talking about this big family we are, uh, we are really a big family, and it, it, we are even more family now that we are closer. It's not at all an, an issue of authority or not authority. You're just closer. You're sort of like together. Mm -hmm. You're more together. But it goes a little bit against that, that maybe the image that people might have that, oh, 260 years old, yeah. meaning old-fashioned. Right? Maybe, but uh, I think the image has to move to. How do you cope? Uh, with these, these new employees, and yes, you have a lot of employees that have been working here for a long time. I think your father has worked now for more than 60 years 60 in this years. bank, yep. but there are always new people coming in. Yes. So if you give them the, the values or if you explain the bank to them, yeah. uh, how, how, do you, how do you make sure that they're, they're aligned, that they're on board, and that they kind of carry on these traditions and these values? I think you cannot really make sure, uh, this sure from one day to another. I mean, we, we quite often talk to these, uh, to these uh, people. Um, uh, for instance, in, uh, in my department, which is the client relationship department, as soon as someone has uh, been here for three months, that's uh, the probate side, which is, uh, which is ending, then, then I sit together with this person and then I ask this person, how did you arrive here at the bank? And then the, the person tells me I was very well received, I was well introduced, I went through like a training program and so on. And then I asked the person, um, uh, uh, what questions do you have to a partner of the bank? And then these people are asking about uh, what's the equity of the firm, what, what are the uh, challenges the firm has, what we do on the IT side, and so on and so forth. So these persons then, they, they have up to an hour or so to, to ask these questions. And like this, I can sort of transfer the values as well. And this generation Y, by the way, which is sort of like moving in, they, this is a great generation. I think I like they ask them. A lot they're, of questions. They're very, they ask a lot of questions, uh, quite bluntly. They don't have. I mean, they are on the basis of Martin. What do you think? Mm -hmm. So, so it it really works quite well. And the generation Y has a good. 
uh, education and is very well prepared to really, uh, to really uh, bring in ideas as well, mm. new ideas. Uh, since you were talking about the challenges for, for the industry, but also uh, the challenges for, for your bank, uh, you mentioned it yourself, you're, you're, you're not too big to fail, uh, you're in a niche, you, you, you have to face pressure, you have to face challenges. How do you deal with that? For example, when we speak about uh, possible pressures from foreign authorities, uh, from, from uh, other players, Players, other key holders in that in that uh, regard. Uh, how do you deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis? Uh, since um, since we are really liable with our own skin, what's going on? We are very defensive on what what sort of uh, business we are taking in, and we are very sensible of obeying the rules. So if there are new rules by the FINMA, or if there are new rules by foreign authorities, and so on. We are really careful. We have a, a big staff in our legal so department. Almost more than maybe probably uh, the almost ones. more the, than other banks. And uh, what we want uh, as the last thing is that it says on Neue Zürcher Zeitung, uh, Ron and Bottmer washes money for this and this party. Um, so. So we are very careful with this. And uh, I'm not saying that it never happens, but we would like to reduce the risk that it happens to an absolute, absolute minimum. Mm -hmm. Which goes down again to the question of risk. And you said it yourself, we have to be very, very risk focused. Yeah. Have you ever had to say no to a big business that later on was probably a mistake or that you thought ah, maybe we were too careful or too cautious there? <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's true. I mean, I, we said no to many different things. And in many cases, we are happy that we said no. But there is almost like a pendulum swinging forth and back between taking up risk and taking a, a up less risk. And that goes a bit along with the, with the uh, cycles at the exchanges, you know, the... Uh, how markets are doing, and uh, and certainly we had some issues back in 2008, 2009. We certainly had some taxation issues, and when when these issues sort of pop up, and uh, Finma eventually comes and and is much more rigid about all these things which happened in the last cycle, and then your pendulum is going to away from risk in the direction of uh, no risk taking and. I would say right now we are very close to the no risk taking side and maybe the pendulum has swung to the extreme now and we are going back a bit more in the direction of taking more risk. And, uh, but I, I never feel bad about that we have uh, um, pushed away some business. Um, a, a decision is a decision and, and mostly it was a good decision. But when you follow the markets like that, uh, if, if we have a, a bullish period, for example, are you, are, you, are, you, are you more inclined to take risks or are you more bearish and, and do the other way around when, when, uh, when people are a bit cautious? Yeah, I mean, there are the, the two things about risk, taking risk for the clients in the portfolio or taking risk for a uh, for a type of clients to, to get them in or to give them uh, 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 loans uh, that they can do more business. Um, in terms of like taking risks, uh, in terms of clients uh, taking the clients in or uh, uh, getting new business, uh, we, are, we are probably relatively defensive and we we'll probably stay that way for, for quite some time. In terms of what we do in the portfolios for the clients, it's always a discussion with the client. And uh, of course, as long as the business cycle goes well, then you have a tendency to take a bit more risk. That's, that's for sure. A final question. Arne Bottom is over 260 years old, we said it. Uh, do you see it another 260 years? I mean, you're growing, you're, you're, you're steadily growing uh, and, and, and business is doing uh, well. Yeah. Uh, you have new clients, you have new generations of clients, as we heard. But a model like this, can it go on for another 260 years? It's a bit tough to say uh, it goes on for another 20, uh, 260 years. Uh, I would say it will uh, hopefully go on for the next generation. And this is about as far as I could see. Um, what we try to do is really not to grow like this, but maybe to grow like this, because like this you can digest the growth much better. You are not losing too much DNA, because, uh, because like this you would be sort of like washed out in terms of DNA. 
DNA and like this, you would, we would have eventually have to go to the stock market and have our uh, company listed. And then the company becomes totally different. Then it has to start to think about quarter to quarter and so on. So we are really happy to keep the growth this way. And like this, we can keep the, uh, the business in the family. And that's what we want. If I came back in a few decades here, do I see Martin Biedemann as well with 86, 87, uh, still advising his clients? Probably, yes. I think, again, my father is a good example. He's 87 and, uh, and he still, he doesn't come to the office. I mean, I just met him uh, down, down the corridor just now. He doesn't come to the bank just to read the newspaper. He comes, keeps him uh, fit in terms of what's going on in my computer, what's going on in the financial markets. He cannot advise his lady clients, they're mostly ladies because, because they survived their husbands. Um, uh, uh, just, just like that, he has to know what's going on and that keeps him fit. And, um, and, he, and therefore he likes it and I believe in, in 20, 30 years uh, I'll probably do the same. Martin Biedemann, thank you very much. Thank you.